Well, good morning. I'm Julia Davis from the Polk Transportation Planning Organization, and I'm with Tom Phillips. Hi, I'm Tom Phillips, the Executive Director of the Lakeland Area Mass Transit District, otherwise known as the Citrus Connection. You may be watching from our viewing area where you are familiar with our brand Winter Haven Area Transit, or if you're watching this from rural Polk County, you may notice that some of our smaller vehicles are called Polk County Transit Services. Uh, but whatever type of service you are provided, uh, we're excited that you're watching today to give you an update about public transportation in Polk County and where we are going with our transportation development plan. Because if you don't have a plan, you can't know where you're going. Right. So what is the Citrus Connections 2022 TDP? Well, the TDP is the Transit Development Plan, and that's a 10-year strategic plan for transit. It's a requirement from the Florida Department of Transportation so that Citrus Connection can get grant funds and it incorporates best practices. So the TDP is very important for all transit organizations, but specifically for Polk County, uh, because if you look at Polk County, we're 2,009 square miles. Uh, we are the size of a small state. Yes. Uh, situated between the Tampa and Orlando international markets, uh, or national markets. And then we have this really interesting thing in that we have 17 municipalities, where we've got Lakeland that's the largest, still under 200,000 people. Mm -hmm. And then you have smaller communities like Lake Hamilton uh, that have a few hundred or a few thousand people. And we have everything in between. And yep. then we have rural Polk County. So it's not a one size fits all approach, right? If we're looking at New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, um, we kind of know what type of transit they need, mm -hmm. right? They need high density transit, they need rail, uh, they need big bus, they need bus rapid transit, mm -hmm. but they don't have to look at what the rural needs are or what a small town uh, needs or what a Amazon Air service might need in Lakeland. Um, so this transportation development plan in Polk County really looks at a lot of different things um, and it's important that we have that so that we can meet the needs of all of our constituents because the transportation development plan serves not just those who ride transit but those who may ride transit yes. and even if you don't ride transit and you may never use transit uh, we want to make sure that we're the best stewards of the taxpayer dollars and that we have the best funded and design system with those dollars. Yes. So where are we with the plan, Julia? Well, Tom, we conducted a massive public outreach uh, campaign between January and March. We reached out to stakeholders, employers and employees, and we conducted a public survey. I think that's awesome because uh, you know meeting people where they are mm -hmm. is really important. Yes. And I think that that's that's neat because you know we can stand in a library or a government complex and and do that, but meeting people where they are mm -hmm. really elicits that that important feedback. Right. It was good. Now later today we'll be talking about what's going on next and why you should care because mainly we want to know what your transit needs are and your transit priorities. And then we'll tell you about some upcoming events and how to get engaged. So the public outreach conducted, we did employer employee outreach, stakeholder interviews, bus operator surveys, discussion group workshops, online surveys, and public workshops, including one on February 24th uh, here with PGTV that was streamed out to Facebook and is now available on YouTube. Yes, and I know that one of the things that I was really excited about as the executive director of the transit agency was the bus operator surveys mm -hmm. because we conduct an annual employee engagement survey yes. within our organization and it was great to have the TDP bus operator surveys at the same time and as we had hoped, the concerns and uh, hopes for the bus operators in the employee engagement survey yes. matched up very, very closely to the bus operator surveys, which made me feel like they're, they're very consistent in, in what they want for themselves mm -hmm. and what they want from the community when it comes they to were, transit. They were loud and clear about the, the needs of the public and the needs of the uh, operators. Excellent. Yes. So I want to uh, say a great big thank you to all the people and organizations who contributed the time and input so far. So let's talk a little bit about the stakeholder interviews, Tom. Um, the county 
and the five commissioners and the 17 municipalities plus various boards like the LAMTED board, the Transportation Planning Organization, the Transportation Disadvantaged Local Coordinating Board, and the, um, there's a group for the US 27 area. Mm -hmm. So we interviewed at least 16 individuals and several groups to obtain information. And, and I heard the feedback was great. I heard that there was uh, suggestions for enhanced marketing. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, marketing in the government sphere is always a challenge, right? Yes. Uh, because we don't have the money of the private sector. And even if we had unlimited funds, you know, radio and television probably isn't the best use of taxpayer dollars. Right. So I, I'm excited to, to kind of read into the TDP about what some of those marketing ideas are. Yes. I know there was a lot of excitement about SunRail. Mm -hmm. uh, as most of you know who are watching, uh, you can visit www.ridecitrus.com uh, or download one of our apps and you can see that we already have uh, service to SunRail. It is sparse, uh, but there's lots of discussions about what's the future of SunRail in mm -hmm. Polk County. Does it come further into Polk County? Does it stay where it is? Uh, but I'm glad that people are excited about SunRail and I'm sure um, Brightline uh, as well. Probably when people were talking about SunRail, they, they were probably thinking about Brightline. They were, um, yes. Brightline as well. So yes. we'll see what happens with that. Um, obviously, Polk County hopes to get a stop, but even if we don't get a stop mm -hmm. in the initial phase, uh, it's going to be important that we have those connections. Um, and then obviously uh, with the emerging technologies of compressed natural gas, liquefied natural gas, uh, electric hybrids, um, uh, hybrid diesel type things, um, very excited about what the future future holds for that. Um, uh, definitely, as you know, 100% of our fleet right now is traditional uh, ultra low sulfur diesel. Mm -hmm. So we're being as economical as we can. We're also being good to the environment in that it's ultra low sulfur diesel. Uh, but yes, definitely some emerging technologies coming out of those conversations as right. well. It was, it was fun to see the interest. It was fun for me when I was interviewing all these stakeholders to see their interest in the electric and hybrid buses or CNG. Of course, CNG is very expensive because then you have to convert the whole maintenance facility to, to uh, deal with CNG. Absolutely. So then, Tom, we uh, interviewed the employers. We interviewed Advent Health, Citrus Connection, Lakeland Regional Health, the Polk County Board of County Commissioners, and Polk County Schools. But once we interviewed the employers, who represent over 21,000 employees, they also have daily visitors and clients and students. They do perceive transportation as a challenge mm -hmm. for hiring and retaining staff. And the majority of them have a lot of interest in having transit connections. And they're interested in um, commuter services and your universal access program. Absolutely. Tom. So if you look at the if you look at the in individual results. Yes. Um, so we know that over 93% of the of the people who participated in the survey felt like there was a need for expanded public transportation yes. services, which is no surprise. Yes. Uh, as the seventh poorest suburban area in the United States, uh, the Brookings Institute noted that the number one reason that Polk County was the seventh poorest suburban area in the U.S. was a lack of mass transportation, specifically a lack of mass transportation out Inside the city of Lakeland. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we look at how people would use it, now that's very interesting. It is. Uh, the number one response was shopping. Yes. Uh, which is not our number one trip type. Our number one trip type is employment, but it's good to see that people feel that if there were more transit, they'd use it for shopping, those quick trips, right? Yeah. So I think that when we look at the need for improved transit, one of the things that we're hearing uh, when we look at shopping or social recreational is I want increased frequency, yes. right? If I had a bus that came by every 15, every 20 minutes instead of every hour, I could use it for shopping or recreation. Right. Then when we start to move down the survey results, I think we start to see more traditional responses, which is the work, uh, education in college, mm -hmm. uh, religious outings, right. and that it tends to be more of, of how people are, with the exception of, of religious, the work and education is the core of what we're currently providing. Right. So um, what we want seems to be more frequency, mm -hmm. and how we're using it currently is for those absolute essentials that are there. Right, and Tom, it was interesting, shopping is also, when people say they want to go shopping, what they mean is they want to go out and about. They right. want to just go see stuff. They don't necessarily want to go to one store. They want to go and wander around and, and see other people. So that shopping's very important. 
And then social recreational, when I was coding some of the paper surveys, many people said they, they wanted to go to either the Tampa airport or the Orlando airport. So I put that in as social recreational. Yeah. Now they might have been visiting family or commuting for a work trip, but, but the closest way I could put it in our buckets for the survey was to put it in as social recreational. Absolutely. So. And I know that we talked a little bit about uh, more frequent bus service, right. right? Right. So we've got three lines within Polk County right now that operate on 30 minute headways. Mm -hmm. uh, the Florida Avenue bus, which we call the gold line. Right. Uh, and then we have the pink line, which is the medical corridor. Yes. And then we have Cypress Gardens Boulevard. Right. Everything else is between 45 minutes or uh, 90 minute service. It, mm -hmm. it spans that. So frequent service makes sense. Yes. Most of the time, uh, and what we saw in these public uh, surveys, is people want transit to be three things, fast, frequent, and fun, the yes. three Fs. Uh, and the survey results that you coded really show that. So more frequent bus service was very popular. Uh, expansion to new areas. If you don't have access to the bus, right. first thing you need is access to the bus. Yeah. Uh, and then later service hours and earlier service hours. So uh, again, looking at Polk County as a whole, um, public transit in Polk County operates uh, just before six o'clock in the morning. Uh, and stops right around seven o'clock at night on most routes. A lot of people didn't that I interviewed did not realize how short the yes. service time was. And so if you look at the fact that we are strategically situated on I-4, mm -hmm. which means we have a disproportionately uh, a proportionate number of warehousing jobs, yes. those warehouses typically operate 24-7, mm -hmm. not 365, but pretty close, yeah. right? And so if you think of, let's just pick on Amazon, uh, or pick, not pick on, pick Amazon, for example, uh, public transit's great, and we serve Amazon out on mm -hmm. County Line Road and mm -hmm. their other locations but we're really only relevant in the first shift workers' lives. Yes. And typically, when you start, you don't get those premium hours. Right. Right, you're starting second shift, or maybe or you're, third. you're third, starting third shift. Right. And so public transit's not really relevant to you. Right. Also, you typically start off at a lower rate when mm -hmm. you start off at an organization and work your way up. So when you need transit the most, typically when you're starting off in a new job, yes. if you're transit dependent, yes. uh, at, at warehousing jobs, it can be very difficult for us to be relevant because they're not, they're not where they need to be. And then looking at other things, uh, connection of rail, bus rapid transit, mm -hmm. um, premium on-demand services, Sunday services. And I think that what that shows is, is that the people that you surveyed and the people who responded yes. understand where we are in the spectrum. Yes. Right? Yes, that was the main thing. Many people said, make, make what we have more. Right. You know? So, um, so. so I, I think it's important for you to talk a little bit about why, why should people get involved. Okay, so this transit development plan is a 10-year picture for the transit services in Polk County. And um, it's broken into uh, two parts, the first five years and the second five years. And so we want to know what people's vision is for transit service over the next 10 years. Where should Citrus Connection be, uh, it, you know, again, uh, more frequency, uh, more places, more time of day, those sorts of things. And then we want you to join in the discussion on transit needs and transit priorities. And we'll be having a series of public workshops uh, coming up in May. May 18th at the Lambshead offices at your, your place mm -hmm. on George Jenkins from 8 to 11 in the morning. And then Thursday, May 19th at the Winter Haven Terminal from 8 to 11 a.m. We'll also be going to some public events like the Polk County Hunger Action Summit on May 17th at the Stewart Center in Bartow. We'll have a table there. We'll be providing information on what the proposed routes look like, what the needs are, what the expansion areas were to be identified. We also will be having another public survey coming online in May. It will be available at the Polk TPO website. Um, so that this is a picture of the public outreach that we're doing, the Absolutely. community events, social media. And we're filming this in, in late April. Yes. And so this is really about what's gonna go happen from, from May uh, through uh, September. Yes. Uh, really kind of as this is hitting its, its late miles in the marathon, right? Yes. Um, so more community events, more email blasts, 
Uh, obviously, on all of our buses, we want to have flyers right. on the buses. If you're a bus rider, uh, get used to the fact that you may see seat drops. So sometimes we post things uh, on the wall in a static fashion, and sometimes we actually have our bus drivers uh, during layovers put things on the seats uh, so that you can see that. Uh, we've got a social media presence at the TPO, mm -hmm. uh, at the Citrus Connection, at the Board of County Commissioners. Um, and so it'll be a very exciting time for people to be able to uh, get their input in. And then also, while all of this is happening, the Lakeland Area Mass Transit District Board will have met for their strategic planning session, right. uh, led by Dr. Craig Collins. Mm -hmm. um, and he'll be taking us through that process as well. Mm -hmm. So hearkening back to the beginning of this show, yes. where we talked about the uh, employee engagement survey from the Citrus Connection lining up with the bus driver surveys that mm -hmm. you did, it'll be neat to see how this whole TDP process lines up with what the Lakeland Area Mass Transit District Board is seeing as the subject matter experts as well. And, and what their priorities are and, and their vision for the future. So this is uh, where to find information on the TDP process over the next few months, starting with the Polk TPO website, polktpo.com, and the Citrus Connection website, ridecitrus.com as well as the Polk TPO Facebook and the Polk County Government Facebook pages and the Polk PGTV portal. Additionally, eventually videos from the PGTV go on to YouTube. And then you have the Citrus Connection information as well. Absolutely. Yes. So looking at the timeline, mm -hmm. obviously we'll have May with the public workshops and the surveys. Yes. That'll continue through the summer into spring into this fall uh, with the Lamb Ted board meetings in August through September. Right. And then the big due date, right? Right before Halloween. Right. Uh, is is the submission of it, of it uh, and it's due by October 28th. Right. So uh, much like I know a lot of you are watching our, our government junkies. Um, and enjoy this this kind of thing and you know the government moves slowly but assuredly so that is the submission due date right that will not be the date that we have it on the shelf uh, and be able to say yeah you know here's everything ready for public consumption but we will make sure uh, especially Julia and I and the resources at PGTV will make sure that the information is disseminated because this isn't our plan this is their plan this is true. Um, and it's so we plan. want you all to have access to that and, and see where it's going, uh, going to go. Mm -hmm. And we're definitely not, you know, I, I think in wrapping this up, I want people to understand that we don't wait, right, yes. every 10 years or for every major update to say this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And we realize that the social and economic indicators of Polk County change the moment this hits the shelf. Yes. Right. Uh, if that airline uh, ends up coming to Lakeland, which I just read about in the newspaper and undisclosed airlines in, in <laughs> conversations with Lakeland, if that hits, uh, then we need to figure out how to have bus service out there. Yes. And that may be something that wasn't specifically addressed in the TDP. We're still going to meet that need. This doesn't, this doesn't handcuff the transit agency. Right. It just pushes us in the direction that makes the most sense. And, and you know, Tom, we do have the annual updates of yes. the TDP. So. Um, and so uh, one of the things that we've done, and you can see here on the screen, is starting in October 1st uh, of this coming year, uh, what we are going to be doing is implementing another downtown community circulator in Lakeland. All right. Uh, so a few years ago, uh, you may have been aware that uh, the city of Lakeland entered into what was called the Dixieland Road Diet. Mm -hmm. This was a section of Florida Avenue, uh, uh, approximately uh, from the Cobb and Penn uh, to uh, the Lakeland Terminal mm -hmm. uh, in that particular project area. I'm, it's, I'm kind of, it's not my project, but that's the general area. And the road went from four lanes yes. down to two. Right. Uh, and the reason that that was done was it was a non-conforming road the, the way that it was. Uh, and so the Lakeland City Commission, in partnership with the Florida Department of Transportation, decided to embark on what was called the Dixieland Road Diet. Mm -hmm. And so what they did was they went down from four lanes to two. Yes. Temporarily to test things. Yes. What that meant was we lost 14 bus stops. 14. 
uh, and our terminal was affected as well. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't abandon our most popular route. Right. So what we did was we implemented the Peach Line, which is a community circulator that runs in and around Dixieland. Mm -hmm. So you can get off the bus at the Cobb and Penn, or you can get off the bus, uh, I'm sorry, on Brunel, or you can get off the bus at the Lakeland Terminal mm -hmm. and ride the Peach Line yes. in the area that where the 14 stops were deleted. So we created a community circulator, mm -hmm. extremely popular. Good. We then implemented the Squeeze, right. which is the downtown golf cart program, which operates on Friday and Saturday nights, starting at Florida Southern College, mm -hmm. running all through downtown Lakeland. It's an eight-person golf cart, hop-on, hop-off service, and then runs to the RP Funding Center, where we have hotels that are at 95% occupancy on Friday and Saturday night, right. running those tourists to downtown, to the eateries, so they're spending the money downtown Lakeland and not at chains. Right. We love chains. They employ yes, locals, yes. but we'd rather have them spend those dollars local, so the squeeze meets that need. So we, we implemented one community circulator because we had to. Mm -hmm. Then we did another one because we saw that there was a need, especially with small businesses coming out of COVID. And so we said, you know what we need to do? We need to make downtown Lakeland uh, a little bit more accessible. And right. instead of having to transfer from multiple buses to reach downtown, we got to the size where we said, you know what, we need a large bus, a 30 foot bus, that's just doing a community circulator. Right. And that's what uh, the viewers can see that's on the screen. And it does say draft. It does right? say draft, right. Okay. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to meet with the, the public and see exactly where the stops are going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a general overlay of of where the route's going to go and what those times are going to be. And so for any of you that are watching that are bus riders, uh, to get from one side of that that service area to the other, you were able to do that for the last forty years but you had to transfer buses right. in order to be able to do it. And now you're going to be able to do that with this community circulator. And then what's really exciting, Julia, is all of those routes that leave the downtown terminal, which you can see on the screen, it's kind of there in the center, yes. uh, is, the, is the transfer point. All of those buses that used to, to go out into this community circulator yes. will now run express through that area, mm -hmm. which will make it much more efficient and quicker yes. for people to get to other areas of Lakeland while still transferring to the downtown circulator to get to, to where they need to go. So even if the downtown circulator is a route that you wouldn't use, mm -hmm. it's going to benefit you as a transit rider because every other bus that would have stopped in these service areas will now run express through the area. So um, very, very excited about, it, about that. It sounds really exciting and I can't wait to see what the public thinks of it this summer. So I think it's important that we leave them with our contact information. Right. Uh, so again, I'm Tom Phillips, the Executive Director of the Citrus Connection, uh, which operates as the Citrus Connection, uh, the Lakeland Area Mass Transit District, Winter Haven Area Transit, or Polk County Transit Services. Uh, feel free to contact me at www ridecitrus.com or T Phillips, that's with two L's, T-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S at ridecitrus.com. And you can contact me about any questions you have about day-to-day -day operations, uh, employment at the Citrus Connection, uh, fare questions, how your tax dollars are being spent, uh, any questions about the actual operation and or funding of the bus service, uh, I'd be happy to answer uh, that question. And there are 199 really qualified employees who stand right next to me every single day. So if I don't have the answer to those questions, we will get you the answers to those questions. Tom, you have a 199 fantastic employees. They're good it's people. It's been a pleasure to work with them during this transit development plan project. So again, I'm Julia Davis. I'm an AICP. That means I'm a planner. I'm a senior transportation planner with the Polk Transportation Planning Organization. And you can contact me about the transit development plan and where and when the public workshops are. And the TPO's website is www.polktpo.com. Thank you for watching us today. Travel safe and God bless. Yes.